The name of the movie is Heat. The year it was made was 1995. Its runtime is 170 minutes. The genres include action, crime, and drama. The cast includes Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer, and Danny Trejo. The director was Michael Mann, and the tagline is a Los Angeles crime saga. A group of professional bank robbers start to feel the heat from the police when they unknowingly leave a clue at their latest heist. Heat's one of my favourite crime films. It follows two main characters, Vincent Hanna and Neil McCauley. Hanna's third marriage is on the decline due to his obsession with his job as a cop. His attention-deprived stepdaughter is falling apart and as his wife states, he spends more of his life among the remains of dead people rather than with the living. Hannah's story is that of a man trying to succeed in his professional career, something that he values over his home life, whether he likes to admit it or not. The head-in-hand moments throughout the movie give the viewer a understanding of his frustration at his own failures to keep his life together and to cling on to his personal life. He knows deep down, as does his wife, that he enjoys his job more than he enjoys the company of his family. It's what makes him tick, as he says, keeps him on the balls of his feet. Need I say that the role is perfectly played by Al Pacino? From the cold and hard stares to the hilariously improvised rants. She got a great ass. No character is more entertaining to watch in the movie, except maybe Neil McCauley. Here we have a man hardened by his time in jail, a man only interested in the next school, whether it be large or small. No mistakes, no taking chances, full on goatee flexing coolness. Macaulay shares a strong relationship with other members of his crew and is the only person without a wife or girlfriend. Though tough as nails, his humane side does come through many times, like how he never kills unless he can help it. But he does have a distant nature, the reason for which is revealed as someone told him to. Don't let yourself get attached to anything you are not willing to walk out on in 30 seconds flat if you feel the heat around a corner. This motto could be seen as the explanation for his success, making it ironic that when he does find someone he cares about, Macaulay meets his demise after having broken his own 30 second rule. De Niro does an excellent job, as he usually did back then. Actors just can't, you know, act cool nowadays like these guys could. Pacino and De Niro lead an all-star cast consisting of the likes of Val Kilmer, John Voight and Tom Sizemore. The supporting cast, especially Kilmer, do fine jobs at handling their characters. This is what makes Heat such a successful movie, essentially. It's the characters. None of them are, you know, cardboard, only there to increase body counts. All of them have their own personalities, their own backstories, and the movie feels like you've been dropped into a time period of these people's lives, making Heat definitely one of the greatest character films of all time. Take uh, Donald Breeden, a recently paroled ex-convict determined to start fresh in his life. Sure, by the end of the film, nobody probably remembers him, but in the character's small amount of screen time, he manages to represent the tragic tale of how many people don't want to give ex-convicts a second chance to start fresh, often leaving the path open for these people to go back into a life of crime. As is the case with Breeden, whose agreement of taking another job with Neil over a dead-end job at the grill with an arse as a boss provides too tempting, but ultimately results in his death. What he is is about men, strong men, and the women who support them. The first half of the film is like watching two different movies at the same time, one following the life of Hannah and the other following the life of Macaulay. That is until the two tales start to string together via a certain famous coffee shop scene, the first time the two actors have ever been on screen together. Well, technically they're obviously on the highway scene beforehand, but you know what I mean. Some people complained about this from that uh, the two don't share enough screen time together, but I don't agree with this. I think man perfectly balanced the amount of time they got I didn't overdo it. The clash of two titanic actors would be one of the most anticipated scenes in cinema. And yet did anyone think that it would take place over a coffee table? I sure didn't, but it's perfect, it's beautiful. Seeing the two sparring off against each other with talks of their jobs, their personal lives, how each affects the other, their manliness. The dialogue is good as the two slowly gain a mutual understanding of one another. The line, there's a flip side to that coin, symbolizes how the two characters, and even the actors really, are different sides of the same coin. The emotionally absent Neil shows a hint of sentiment and the tightly wound Hannah seems to talk to him freely as if he's an old friend. There's an understanding between them that the women never had with them. Each knows it's not really the outcome of their jobs that satisfies them but the thrill of it. Like when a dog goes after a stick, the fun part is chasing it but when they're done it's all over and they wait until the next opportunity. Credit to Michael Mann and co for not overdoing the whole De Niro Pacino thing as it could have become too self-conscious but thankfully he didn't. Hannah's obsession with catching Macaulay drives his marriage down the toilet. 
whereas Macaulay has no attachments, even furniture, so he can leg it as soon as possible. The two are the best at what they do because they discipline themselves to do it. Both men are shown to be surprisingly emotionally fragile behind their tough exteriors. When the prostitute's mother hugs and cries in front of Hannah, he's speechless, lost for words. And I think it's moments like that that drive him, but not as much as simply the thrill of what it is that he does. Macaulay is distracted from his professional life by his new love interest, with whom he has to adjust to connect emotionally with her. An example of this is when he walks into the house with her just goggling at the TV screen after Neil's brutal shootout, and he doesn't even realise how poor the woman is, because of course to him it's quite normal. And of course it could be argued that she was his downfall in the same way that Trejo lost the will to live after his girl dies. And he only even betrayed Neil in the first place because she was in danger. Or how Chris returns to his wife almost getting caught. Aside from the budget obviously used on the actors, he could have been relatively small scale and low budget. Like the film uh, LA Takedown for example, the movie that this is a remake of. But it gets stretched to an appropriate scale of epicness. To create a sense of anguish and isolation in a land as dense as Los Angeles as the film does is a true indicator of the talent of Michael Mann. There's many standout scenes like the nail biting robbery scene or the shootout in which real guns were used. Mulberry's soundtrack was used perfectly too. For example that part where Pacino is entering the highway. The guitars just start hitting the badass part of the score as soon as Hannah's car is level with the camera. After which the camera follows the car using a continuous shot of the side. It's just these tiny small little things that really add to a film. The soundtrack in the end on the runway is also beautiful, acting as a good companion piece to a scene equally sad and poetic. With its strong direction, crisp looking cinematography and exceptional acting, he, driven by a strong dose of masculine energy and perfectly realised characters, leaves a mark on the 90s as one of the great crime films of the decade. My rating, 9 out of 10.